Hi, it's great to be here. Um, I'm a perceptual psychologist, and what I'm really interested in is how our perceptual experiences change the way we view the world. And I'm really interested in experts, because experts are these kind of weird, quirky people. These are like bird experts and dog experts and car experts who, who have these very specialized interests, and they become obsessions. And something sort of interesting happens with their perceptual systems as they become experts, is that it's, there's a sort of a change in the way they see the world. And I think uh, I got this uh, idea back in uh, graduate school. I went to the University of Oregon, and I had a friend who was a bird watcher, and he used to take me on these bird hikes. And we'd see a little fluttering in, in the trees there, and he said, oh, Bachman warbler, or you know, yellow-throated sparrow, blah, blah, blah. And I'd, you know, by the time I could, you know, I'd say, oh, there's a brown, furry thing there. And so, <laughs> Something that was like, he was seeing stuff that I, I, I don't know. It was just a, a, a different way of looking at the world. And that led me to study uh, experts. So again, bird experts, car experts, and, and bring them into the lab. It's interested in sort of the underlying cognitive uh, processes of these experts, but also looking at the neural mechanisms. And so that was a lot of fun, bringing in these bird experts. Uh, but uh, you know, it's kind of a hassle. Uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to find these birds. You, know, you know, there aren't that many bird experts out there, and then you have to bring them into the lab. So I thought, oh, is there something that we're all experts in? And it turns out there is something you know, with faces. I, it's been claimed that all people are pretty much face experts. And faces are really interesting objects that we recognize. Because when we look at a face, we're, we get so much information from a single face that we, we know something about the person's gender, for example. We know if it's a male or a female. We also know things about the person's race, you know, Caucasian, Asian, African. So those are kind of like obvious or perceptual features that we, we get almost for free in a face. But also there's something really uh, important uh, that our face reveals to the world. And that's our, our, our identity. That is essentially who we are is represented in our face. That the, the face becomes sort of our gateway to our identity. The other really important information that we get from the face is our internal state, how we're feeling, or at least the feeling we want to project to the outside world. So it's through our expressions, our facial expressions, that we project to others <laughs> that we kind of give some uh, sense of uh, what we're doing or how we're feeling. OK, so that's faces. Now, Think about it. I mean, all faces are pretty similar. We all have two eyes, nose, and mouth. And it's these subtle changes in the way we move our face and who we are that it really helps us sort of negotiate our social world. Well, it's been claimed that most people are face experts. But it turns out there is a population that isn't so expert at faces. And this is uh, individuals and children with autism that a lot of the clinical literature and empirical literature suggests that children with autism really struggle with some of these face processes that we take for granted. We know that kids with autism spend less time looking at faces. So when we come into the room, like this, we're really drawn to people's faces. We sort of want to check them out, see, what, see where they're looking, see you know, how attractive they are, and all these sorts of you know, how they're feeling. Kids with autism might walk into this room and be sort of drawn to the, this you know, lamp or these crazy uh, string things here or the chairs. And those are the things that seem to capture the attention of kids with autism. Also, we know that kids with autism have difficulty processing eye gaze. So eye contact is the way that we know that we're communicating when you have a conversation with somebody. The way you check in with them is making sure that they're looking at you. Uh, recognition of identity, who somebody is. And there's, uh, in talking to moms and dads with kids with autism, they'll report these stories where um, uh, their son might go to school one day and make a friend, go back to school the next day, 
and actually making a friend for a child with autism is an achievement. But going back to school n the next day and not being able to recognize who that friend was. Um, interpreting facial expressions, right? I mean, this becomes so much the way that we can monitor and uh, understand how people are feeling. And these expressions are really dynamic. So our, uh, when we're smiling or we uh, are disgusted, these are fleeting expressions that we, uh, uh, we have on our face uh, that's only there for a moment. Okay, so kids with autism are maybe face novices, and that might explain some of the social emotional deficits that kids with autism confront. So our challenge really is, um, can we train up face expertise in children with autism, thinking that this might be a really sort of practical way to develop uh, social uh, emotional uh, abilities. And here at the University of Victoria, we've been fortunate to establish what we call the Center for Autism Research Technology and Education. And this is a center of just fantastic UVic students who have sort of come together with different areas of skills, either in computer science, psychology, education, counseling, and we've, we've sort of formed a sort of coalition to sort of tackle this uh, uh, question of autism and face processing. And our idea is to develop new tools for different minds. So there's a, a view of autism which I think is correct, that not to think of autism as a disability, but uh, simply as a difference. And so now the challenge for us is to develop tools that can accommodate these new ways of thinking. And uh, that's what we've done. Now, we've been fortunate to partner with uh, Marnie Bartlett at uh, University of San Diego. Marnie is an exceptional vision uh, computer scientist, and she's developed this wonderful uh, software called CERT that, uh, that first locks onto a face and then analyzes a facial expression in real time. So it looks at the different muscles of a face. We know that a smile requires the lower lips, uh, of what's called the zygomaticus muscles. What the CERT program's able to do is analyze this in real time. So one of the things we're gonna try to do is uh, a live demo of this CERT. And then also to show you how we've used uh, th this computer program to develop new games for kids with autism. So I'm gonna invite Jose Barrios, our lead programmer of, the, uh, of our center, to come up and serve as our model, our face model uh, for this. So the really interesting thing about CERT is it's a way of, of using the computer as an input device. Okay, so there's Jose, and see the green box? That sort of locks on to Jose's face. And the, the readout here on the right is his activity of different facial muscles. So maybe, Jose, if I can get, just get you to go out of frame for a sec. Okay, so notice there's no faces, no, no activity in the facial muscles. Okay, so come back into frame. All right, so if you can focus now on uh, this AU6, which is the action unit, the facial muscle that's controlling the, uh, his mouth. Now, so give us a big smile, Jose. So you can see that activity goes up. All right, so this now becomes sort of the engine that drives our uh, software. So what we've done at the center then is can we harness this technology, which is amazing, and Marnie Bartlett just is an amazing uh, programmer, can we use these good ideas and develop uh, games that we think are going to appeal to, to kids on the spectrum? So we're, we'll fire up uh, one of our first games, we call it uh, Face Maze. Um, in Face Maze, It's, it's much like Pac-Man, okay? And uh, so you're, you're moving this little blue guy around and blocking your path is, are these smile icons. And the only way you can get rid of them is to smile into the camera. All right? Now occasionally, not only do you encounter you know, smiley guys, but some angry guys. And now you, you okay? Yeah, 
Jose's really good at being angry. So, <laughs> all right. So this was sort of our first step in actually developing production in, in kids with autism. Uh, but the next step is then can we link sort of the perception side as well? So the, the next game that uh, our group developed is called Face Face Revolution. <laughs> so in Face Face Revolution, what we're trying to do now is incorporate the perception of expressions, right? Because when you're engaged in a social interaction, not only are you producing expressions, you have to decipher the uh, uh, expressions of the person you're talking to. Okay. So it's a little hard to see, but these are different expressions. <laughs> Is it sad? <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's good. Go ahead and pause it. So you kind of get the idea of what we're trying to do at, the, at our center. That is, we're trying to harness these new technologies to develop new tools for kids with autism with the uh, ultimate goal of somehow developing software platforms that we can distribute freely to people around the world that hopefully will benefit the families and, and kids with autism. Thanks so much.